Hi, I'm Blueberry. And I'm Gaius. And we are brother and sister from the Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine. In order to be an effective timber framer, you've got to buy some tools. So we're going to break this down into a chronological order in terms of timber framing. One of the first things you'll do is measure, mark, and layout. So we'll talk about those tools first, then move on to sawing, and then lastly, chiseling. There's a lot to cover in this, so we've broken it up into three parts. This is the first part, measuring, marking, and layout. We are focusing on hand tools. We know you can go out and buy chain mortisers and 16 inch circular saws and they are wonderful and we do use them. But the hand tools are a tremendous resource um, that sometimes are overlooked. So we like to just touch on them so that you can be sure to take advantage of them as you go through your build. It's a lot more pleasant too because it's very quiet. It feels more like therapy than work. Dad always says when you break out all of those power tools and it's all really loud, all of a sudden it's really just hard work and it sort of takes away the fun and the artistry um, and the magic of timber framing with hand tools. Obviously you need to have a tape measure to measure your timbers. Um, the one that we have here is the Tajima. What I like about this one is the white background makes it very easy to see. Tape measures are super specific so usually everybody has their own favorite tape measure so when you're shopping for a tape measure be sure to pull out the tape and really study those numbers so that you can be sure that you're comfortable you know, reading the numbers easily and quickly, finding center and so on. This is a framing square. This is Chinois stainless steel framing square. Um, obviously we like it because it's stainless steel, nothing to corrode. The um, marks here are laser etched so they don't wear away and you can actually use a solvent for cleaning pitch off. Um, for those of you that don't know, a framing square is exactly 24 inches long and the blade here is two inches wide so it's very handy for laying out a mortise that is two inches wide. This part of the framing square is called the tongue and it's 16 inches long it's one and a half inches wide so again great for laying out mortises. The chinois framing square is unique for the framing square market because chinois makes it specifically for us you can't really find it elsewhere. In addition to using it to lay out your joints on your beams and make square cuts, we also use the framing square to measure the width of our mortises and sometimes the depth also. This is a combination square. It's made by Sterrett. Uh, we like the satin blade because it eliminates glare. Um, this is a tool that you'll use for checking depth of mortise. So you notice that the blade slides up and down on the head. Um, but perhaps more important than the depth is maintaining a 90 degree cut into the mortise. Obviously, if as you're chiseling down your mortise is getting wider, you're basically ruining the mortise. So you would use the combination square on the surface of the timber and extend the blade down in to make sure that the side of the mortise isn't wandering out. So we really love the Starrett combination square because it's an American company and they're right out of Massachusetts. They guarantee or warranty the square of their tools, so if for some reason you drop yours on concrete and it gets out of a square, you can send it in for recalibration, which is really exciting. Sterrett is sort of more well known for their hole saws and that kind of thing, but they have the most incredible measuring tools. This is uh, a knife that is specific for uh, marking, so before we start chiseling, after we've laid out a joint with a pencil, we like to use this uh, marking knife to actually slice the fiber and it gives us a very specific point that we are uh, chiseling and slicking to. What sets a marking knife apart from any other type of knife is that the back side of the marking knife is flat and the front side is beveled. And that beveled edge tends to push the flat side um, tight to your straight edge. So you would lay your straight edge on the timber and then put the marking knife against it and draw back toward you and the beveled edge helps keep the marking knife tight to the straight edge. This marking knife is specifically Gaius's favorite because it is beveled on both sides. So when you're using it, you can, you can go this way or this way or this way or this way. So it gives you just a lot more versatility. You don't have to be left-handed or right-handed. You can use it either way. All right, uh, this is a carpenter's pencil. Um, the the difference between a carpenter's pencil and a regular pencil, obviously, is that the carpenter's pencil doesn't roll when you set it down on the surface. 
And also the graphite, the beam of the graphite is much more robust than a circular piece of graphite in a round pencil, which allows you to mark on rough wood without snapping off the tip. The trouble with the carpenter's pencil is that it's made to do many different things. So when you start sharpening it, the graphite is quite blunt. So you want to spend your time with a um, utility knife or your um, marking knife to pare down um, the tip of the carpenter's pencil so that it's very finite. The accuracy of your joinery will only be as good as the accuracy and precision of your layout lines. I've cut this funny little detail at the rear end of the carpenter's pencil, basically just exposing the graphite there. That allows you to mark up a straight edge, like so, and then rub it on the surface of your tenon, uh, and that graphite will rub off on the high spots of the tenon so you know where to select to get a good flat surface. If you have any interest in learning more about the tools, head over to our website, shelterinstitute.com. Also, if you're in the area, please stop in and see us. There's always someone here that can give you a face-to-face -face answer about a tool and sometimes even a demo. All right, thanks for watching our video on measuring, marking, and layout. Um, look out for part number two, which is Japanese handsaws. Mm -hmm.